Samantha and this is going to be my December goals and my November wrap up video. I have a lot to talk about. I've got a couple of different lists. I've written a couple like right before bed. I have some things writ written in my planner and there were a couple of questions I wanted to address so those are going to be thrown in with this one too. I really love the concept of these videos because I can really answer some of your guys' questions, talk about things that are going on, give you guys my goals, and we can really connect in the comment section below these videos. It just seems like I get really good feedback on these videos. I ended up asking you guys a couple of questions last month, so I want to feature some of your guys' answers before we get to uh, my goals for this month. So I asked you guys about some easy meals. You guys left me some great ones. I'm going to incorporate them into my meal plan. And then you guys also gave me some of your Christmas traditions. I'm going to highlight some of those. I really loved the find the pickle um, tradition that one of you guys mentioned. I thought that was really cute. I actually saw some pickle ornaments at a store recently and I thought of you. So <laughs> I thought that was a really cute idea. So for my December goals, I've got three goals. And one of them, again, is from last month. It is come up with some Christmas bows. I did watch some tutorials. I half-heartedly tried one idea. It didn't work so great. And then I never went back to it. So again, this month, you know, it's December, I'm going to have to have these bows, so I'm going to have to get serious about this in the next couple weeks. So I will be working on that. And since this is Olivia's first Christmas, I've already felt like pressure for things to be perfect. And she's not going to remember anything. You know, it's just about the pictures. It's about our experience. But I really want Christmas to be really nice. And because I'm kind of starting to think about it way too much and try to plan way too much, I'm setting up one of my goals as no stress. So. This is going to be no stress Christmas. I'm really, really going to stick with that one. I don't want to get stressed out. I don't want to make it unfun. I just want to really enjoy it, relax, have a good time with my baby girl. And then my third one is pick a date for her first birthday. I have family that wants to come visit for her birthday. And so her first birthday might be a little bit big. And I I wasn't really sure we were going to have a really big party. I thought it might just be the three of us hanging out with a smash cake. Um, but I think we're going to go big. I think we're going to celebrate really big and invite the whole family and invite all of our friends and have something big. So I've got to pick a date for that so people can start arranging travel plans. You know, we only have till the end of February and she's going to be one year old. It's crazy. I can't believe it. It's only a few months away. So that is goal number three. Pick a date for Olivia's birthday party. It's crazy. I can't. I can't think about that anymore. All right, so I had a couple of questions come up this month. I want to address those really quick for you guys. Somebody asked, show all of your cleaning products. I'll show you guys under our kitchen sink and in our cleaning cabinet and show you guys what we have. So this is under our sink and I will be moving all of this stuff or child proving this very soon because Olivia has kind of shown an interest in the cabinet handle. She has not opened anything yet, but I know it's just a matter of time. So here is the bulk of our cleaning stuff. I'm just going to sit down on the floor here and walk you guys through everything. So one of the things I bought recently was this J.R. Watkins Home Refresher. It is um, just lemon scented spray. You spray it in the air and it makes your house smell like lemons. I haven't used it very much, but they're kind of hippie-tastic, so I like that. And then I've got a bottle of Pledge. I, I only use this for polishing our table and our nightstands. They're wood and I don't use it very often because I know it's not the best for you, but I do like that pledge. And then one of the things I use all the time is the Honest Multi-Service Cleaner. So I've got a bottle here and I've got three refills right there so I can keep myself stocked in that. And this is the veggie spray. And then one of the things I've used is this Honest Glass Cleaner, and this is one of my least favorite of the Honest products. It smells really strong like vinegar, and then the second time I tried to use it, the um, 
piece up here got clogged, so I haven't used it since then. For windows and mirrors, I have just been using the multi-surface cleaner and it works great. I use this for bathroom surfaces. There's a dog walking in, that's what you hear. Um, I use this for bathroom surfaces and I also use their bathroom cleaner kind of interchangeably, but the bathroom cleaner is eucalyptus mint flavored and you guys know if you've watched any of my videos, I cannot stand mint. I can't stand the smell of it, the taste of it, nothing. It's been since I was pregnant, cannot stand it. Um, so I've been really using this multi-service cleaner a lot in the bathroom surfaces. Back here I've got some dish soap. It's just regular old dish soap. I think that, yeah, that one's Target brand. And then every once in a while, my husband likes to wipe down the counters with these disinfecting wipes. I'm not a huge fan, so I don't buy these very often. And one of these big things lasts us a really long time, especially after I'm making like a chicken dish. He really wants to wipe down the counter. So I let him do that. And then I clean him again with this. <laughs> I'm not a big fan, but I do like to have some on hand to make him feel better about things. And then for hand soaps, I've got tons of these J.R. Watkins ones. Absolutely love their hand soap. I just stock up when they're on sale. For the floors, I use their um, floor cleaner, and then I've been using these wet mopping pads. I really like that you don't have to have the bottle sprayer and the mop. You just have to have the mop with these, which is really nice. Then back here, I've got some carpet cleaner. That's one of the traditional things that we use is carpet cleaner. Then there's some Drano back there that's been used one time. Haven't touched it since. And then we've been using this Up and Up Target brand um, dishwasher gel. I use Honest Company sometimes when I order it. This is the cabinet next to our sliding glass door. I rearranged this one recently. It's got dog stuff. There's dog brushes and stuff in there. My husband's tea. I just like things off the counter. So I decided to put my little cleaning station thing in here. So I always have a a dish rag, and then a cleaner. I've been using this one recently, this all-purpose J.R. Watkins. I'm a really big fan of theirs. I love the lemon scent. So I have this instead of the multi-service cleaner right now for the kitchen. And then I also have my floor cleaner so I can spot mop as needed. I just pull out my Swiffer with one of the reusable pads and go to town with that. So this is our hall closet upstairs. I keep some cleaning stuff in here, mainly for the bathrooms. I also keep all of our towels up here. These are just old washcloths. We've used these for a long time and when they're old I just stick them in here and use them for cleaning. I've got some reusable gloves. I've also got some old t-shirts from my husband. I turned into um, other rags I can use for things and I don't feel bad if these get too nasty. I just throw them away. Um, otherwise I'll just wash them and use them again. So for laundry soap we are still using the Honest Laundry detergent, love the stuff, it keeps our clothes clean. And then some of the conventional stuff that I use for toilets, I like the um, fresh brush system. So you get the refills, it goes with the brush and then they're flushable. And then I also use the toilet cleaning gel. So I really want the toilet to stay nice and clean and smelling nice. And then I also use the Swiffer dusters, which is also a conventional type of thing. All right, I thought of one other thing. We are now in the laundry room, and for laundry stuff, I have a couple of other things. I've got the Fells Naphtha Bar, which I showed in my stain removal video, and then I also make a homemade stain remover using baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, and then traditional laundry detergents. I've got those three handy in the laundry area, and I'll just take them to our guest bathroom and stain remove anything that needs to be stain removed. I also have some of these Oxy Boost laundry things. You just throw in the washer if you want the laundry to be a little bit extra bright or whatever. I can tell this area really needs to be dusted off. But yeah, I think that covers all of my cleaning stuff. Another thing you guys had asked about was Christmas cookies. I mentioned I was buying Christmas cookie stuff in my um, in my recent grocery hauls. I've just been picking up bags of flour and sugar and stuff when I see it on sale because I'm gonna be baking Christmas cookies. So I do have some videos from last year. I think I did four Christmas cookie videos. I do plan on doing some of the same cookies from that, but I also want to pick out some on Pinterest and try. I definitely wanna do some sort of sugar cookie. And I've really loved those like colorful swirl ones where you flatten the dough and then uh, roll the dough up like a cinnamon roll and then slice the cookies. So I really want to try one of those. I think they're super cute and I am going to a cookie swap party, which I think is really cool. So I'm going to have to make something really nice for that one. 
I probably, as much as I hate mint, I'll probably bring the mint cookies because they were such a huge hit last year. Um, and my husband loves them. So if we have any leftovers, he'll eat them. I know that. I'll probably do that. Maybe one other thing for that party. But I still haven't decided yet for that. So since last month, I talked a lot about the mom group stuff. And I just kind of told it like it was. And let you guys know what was happening. I want to give you a little bit of an update with that. I have really embraced a couple of other moms groups. I've been having a really, really good time with them. I posted a couple of new play dates recently. I do feel like I'm forming some really good friendships. Like I said last time, it's been kind of a work in progress the past couple of months because I already pretty much figured out I was going to have to leave the other moms group. It seems like the women in the other groups are just so supportive and so friendly and so far it's been great. I don't clearly see that there's a drama mama in the group, which I clearly was getting drama mama vibes from the very beginning in the other group. I just, I sensed it. My spidey senses were tingling and I don't get that from these groups that I'm in right now. So it's been really nice. It's been a big, huge weight off my shoulders because I was trying, I was fighting so hard not to leave the group, but I was you know, struggling being there. So it's been really, really nice. So I wanted to let you guys know, you know, if one mom's group doesn't work for you, find another one. There's so many of them out there. Even if you're in a small town, I bet you could find some mom groups or some mom activities to join. And people had asked me how I find mom groups. In the comment section, I left a lot of info for somebody, but there's an organization called MOPS, M-O-P-S, Moms of Preschoolers. It is a religious-based group, so keep that in mind if you plan on joining that, but they do have chapters in lots of towns. You can Google search MOPS and find their group. There's also one that's a non-religious-based one that I found called Mothers and More, so keep that in mind. It's not religious-based, um, and you can search for that too. Just Google Mothers and More, and you can see if there's a local chapter in your town. You can also go to library story times and meet other mothers, ask them about mom's groups. Um, I've gotten some good good mom's group leads from library time. You can also check websites like meetup.com. They do have some mom's groups on there. That's how I originally found my first mom's group was meetup.com. And I have since found a lot of mom's groups in my town via Facebook. They just set up Facebook groups. Um, and you can also, you know, Google mom's group, your town name, and try to find them that way. And hopefully you guys will come up with something. I know it's really hard to branch out and make friends, but I do think it's worth it, especially if you're a new mom. Uh, it's been a lifesaver for me. You know, if I was home every day just with my baby, I would feel really isolated and really lonely. And so it's really nice to connect with women that have the same things going on with their lives. YouTube has also been a huge outlet for me, finding you guys, commenting on other people's channels. Um, it's just really nice to be able to do this from the comfort of my own home too, and not always have to put on regular clothes. <laughs> so definitely, I think it is worth it, even if you come into contact with mama drama people, uh, it's really worth it to still branch out, still make friendships. I've got so many wonderful friends that I've found through mom's groups. Some of these women and I are going to be lifelong friends. I already sense we have really strong connections and it's been invaluable to me to find mom's groups. Even the mom's group I left, I still found so many wonderful friendships from that group. So I really don't want my story about the other mama drama to discourage you guys from finding mom's groups or other moms in your area. Definitely still search them out. They're gonna be bad experiences, but they definitely don't outweigh the good experiences. So yeah, that got a little preachy and long, so I'm sorry. <laughs> definitely, I'm a firm believer in finding some moms in similar situations because it really helps put things in perspective. It lets you know things are okay, everybody's going through the same type of thing. And also another great thing is the moms with older kids, it's a really good sneak preview into the future. I can see these other moms their toddlers just go and play. They don't need their mom so much. So it's really nice, especially when she's having a really clingy day and I can look at my mom friends who are a little bit more put together than me. They've got more time to themselves. Their kids play by themselves a little bit better. It's a really good motivation for me to keep my happy face on and 
push through even the really tough day. So for Christmas decorating, we always decorate the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. We don't participate in Black Friday shopping unless it's online. There is nothing in this world I need bad enough to go stand in a really big line in the middle of the freezing cold. It's just, I'm not a big fan of that. I just don't care that much about stuff. I don't care that much about good deals. Um, and if I can find a good deal online, I'll definitely take advantage of that. But I'm not standing in line, especially now we have a baby. There's just no way. Um, so we usually take that day and do our decorating. And so this year, I don't know if we're going to go all out. Usually I put like a mini tree in every room. We've got a couple of big Christmas trees in the main rooms. And I go pretty all out for Christmas. We've got bins and bins of decorations. But I think this year we're going to go really simple. Maybe put out one Christmas tree because... I don't want her getting into stuff. I don't want to have to constantly keep her away from all the decorations. So we're gonna go really light this year and then start going all out again next year. This year we're doing photo Christmas cards and we're going to get our Christmas photos done this weekend. I'm really excited to do that. I just, I wanted something really special for her first Christmas and I thought that'd be the perfect way. I got some little Christmas ornament frames that we can put her picture in and save it and have it every year. We'll pull out those ornaments. I'm really excited about Christmas photos. I just love photos in general. Since I'm a scrapbooker, I just, I don't know, I love photos. So as far as Christmas shopping, we are totally done. I got the last Christmas purchases done this last week. We are done. I still have lots of stuff to wrap because her grandmas went crazy. I've got her tons of stuff. I still am waiting for a couple of things to arrive because I ordered a couple of things online. We didn't spend all that much for her Christmas. I set the budget for $300. We did not spend $300. So I'm pretty happy with that. We did get her quite a few things and her grandma... Her grandmas both just went nuts and got everything else. One of the things we're doing this year as far as Christmas traditions, I asked you guys about yours. One of the ones I'm going to be doing while she's little is a book advent. It is just a book leading up to Christmas. They could open one and then we'll read that book. And Olivia freaking loves books, just loves them. She will pull the books off the shelf and kind of hand them to me and she will sit there and listen to the book. And then when I'm done with the book, I'll close it and she'll just pat it and then sit back and wait for me to read it again. So we just read the books over and over again. I think she'll really love this. It's not like she needs any books because she's got tons of them. And I do rotate out the books just like I do with the toys. Books were given to her for Christmas from other family members. And we also bought a bunch of them. And I scored big time at Dollar Tree. They had a ton of actually Christmas themed board books. And then just a bunch of other board books. Even some Disney ones. Lots of Christmas ones. I ended up getting more than 25 books. I think we have 27 or 29 books right now. She'll just open the rest of them on Christmas. I've seen really cute Christmas Advent book things where they just stack the books in like a triangle shape, the biggest books on the bottom, and then put a little, um, just put like a little bow on top, and it looks like a tiny little Christmas tree. So I probably will do that with the books, although a lot of them are basically the same size. It's going to look a little bit wonky, but... I still think it's a good idea. But yeah, I think that's all I have to talk about today. I know this one was long and rambly. I have a feeling they're just going to be long and rambly um, because I just have a lot to talk about. You guys ask a lot of questions and I want to cover everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of sit down chit chat video and be sure to subscribe. I'm currently doing three to four days a week of videos because I am doing some toy reviews and I'm going to stick with that through December. Um, I think they're always really helpful videos, but especially this time of year with Christmas. I'll probably have a few more of those early this month. Um, so yeah, you can expect videos Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday for sure, and sometimes Friday. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.